guys, welcome to episode two of the Plows Podcast, a weekly podcast run by me, King Mark Three Three, and my co-host. This in this podcast, we uh, discuss a variety of different news topics from a, uh, lots of different genres. And uh, before we start the episode today, we would just like to give a huge thank you to all our fans who supported our pilot episode, and uh, your support mean the world to us. And without you guys, we wouldn't be where we are right now. So a huge thank you to all of you guys, our fans. Uh, and thanks, special thanks to those who supported us on patreon.com slash plowers podcast. And then we get a special shout out at the end of the episode, so stay tuned. Uh, do you guys have anything to say to, you, to our fans? Thank you. Okay. Here's a tip with a spear behind it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, on this week's episode, again, it's FKRC. What's up? Please like my new post on Instagram. Thanks. I'll <laughs> Curry for days. What's up? Please like Fabian's new photo on Instagram. <laughs> All right. So um, in this week's episode, we're going to be talking about a new Fox video about whether or not Minecraft is more than a game and if Minecraft is an, indeed an art form. We're also going to be talking about new music releases, such as uh, including but not limited to Katy Perry, Lupe Fiasco, and Sanfa. And we're also going to do a special uh, shout out to a playlist on Spotify that we think you should check out. <laughs> And uh, we're also going to keep you guys up to date with some developing stories that we covered last week, as well as some new stories which have emerged since our recording. But first of all, let's talk about uh, news in the CSGO community. Um, the map Dust2 has recently been removed from the competitive, competitively allowed maps. And now, Dust2 has been a, a very fan favorite map, and it's been around since uh, Combat Evolved. So it's really a shock to see this map go. And um, what, do you, what do you think this means for not just the CSGO competitive community, but also uh, the competitive gaming community as a whole? I'm talking about, like, do you think uh, other companies such as Riot Games will follow suit and remove their popular maps such as Summoner's Rift and, you know, push towards uh, other maps such as Twisted Tree Land and Howling Abyss? I guess, like, at the end of the day, there are companies trying to make money, so... If they probably saw that they're going to make more money by removing the map. Maybe, like, less people started playing it or some shit. I don't know. But, uh, like, how does playing the map give them money? Because it's know. all in the game, isn't it? I don't know. Like, so spec about it. You pay for the game, and then you get chest drops, and you got to buy the keys. So, does that change your opinion at all? <laughs> I guess so. It does, huh? <laughs> What, what, really do think, what, what do you think this will do to the competitive like scene of CSGO? Might see some like haters. You saw the same kind of thing in MCPVP when the admins wouldn't really like listen to what the community said. Yeah. And in the end, they just ended up with the place being a ruin. So, you know, history tends to repeat itself. Mm. Well, yeah. Are, aren't they? Okay. What do you think, Rahul? Do you have any thoughts on this? Um, I think Dust 2 was a pretty popular map, so... Uh, removing it for whatever reason uh, must have been a pretty big decision by the company you made. Yeah. Because I don't really play CSGO, so I don't know what I can't. Can you just repeat what you just said because you muted yourself? <laughs> I didn't myself, right? <laughs> you said, I heard, like, I don't play CSGO, but I didn't hear anything. Like, I heard you say it's a big decision from Valve. Or, like, the company. I think it's Valve, right? But... So. What like what did, what else did you say? We couldn't hear. We can't hear uh, you. What? I I'm talking right into the mic. Okay, line. talk talk. So, all right, go. What? That's all I had to say. Though. Oh, we didn't hear what you said. I, said, I heard it. What did he say? Yeah, Nick, I think it's you. But what did he say? It's I can hear you perfectly. What did, what did Rahul say? He said like, I don't play much CS:GO. I heard that part. What else did he say? I don't know. <laughs> um, it's just a big decision from Valve. Yeah, and it, really, right? it shows that like they can like change the game if they need to, so it keeps the game fresh and keeps the players like. Yep. Feeling it's say the real game changer. Yeah, it's, yep. it's all like how Riot Games like change up the jungle every season, right? It's a bit, it's a bit similar. You can draw a parallel now, I think. That's true. Yeah, so um, mm-hmm. well, we're going to be uh, remaking the dust yep. map, I'm pretty sure. So we're going to mm-hmm. see if the map becomes better and if it will still be a fan favorite when it's released again. Now we're going to move on to talking about a new Vox video. Do you guys know what Vox is? Yeah. Yep. What is it? They post videos from some YouTube shit, you know? 
Yeah, okay. So they, they post quite philosophical video, isn't it? And so recently they posted a video uh, titled Minecraft isn't just a game, it's an art form. All right? Ooh. So in the video, it just talks about how uh, Minecraft has evolved since being a, uh, a sandbox game and now it's so like people are creating arts, artworks in the creative mode and even selling them as like art books. What do you guys think <coughs> about this statement that they're trying to show us? Um, I think it might, yeah, it's maybe the, oh, I think it can be seen as art. Like if you look at some videos of what people make and you go on mm -hmm. some servers and you look at redstone creations, it's pretty yeah. amazing. I shouldn't be classified as art, so yeah. Well, you think it shouldn't be classified as art? It should be. I don't see why it okay. shouldn't be. Well, like obviously not everything created in Minecraft should be art, right? Obviously, like True. a dirt, like penis you built isn't going to be seen it's not going to be like shown at the uh, Adelaide Museum you know what I mean but for example you might have like a really abstract piece of art that you find at the museum like mm -hmm. a trash can yep. for example so you can draw like an analogy and to for something like really simple that in itself might be like an artistic statement mm -hmm. you might be trying to show like you should see the simplicities in life or something like that yeah well, what's you know the artistic... like, there can always be a message What's the artistic statement in a big penis made out of dirt in Minecraft? Well, that's really up to the reader's interpretation. <laughs> yep, exactly. It's all up to the re uh, okay. uh, reader. And what do you, guys, do you guys think that there's an advantage in using Minecraft as a art medium? <clears throat> yep, for sure. Like, obviously, you know, movies are more engaging than just a painting on the wall. But in Minecraft, you can actually go into the world and experience it for yourself, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's also kind of that like retro-ish, mm -hmm. like eight bit feel or whatever it's called. You know? <laughs> yeah, we can change that with texture packs and stuff. Yeah. That's true. All right. So we all agreed that Minecraft can be viewed as art form, just as yeah. like yeah. games can be viewed as art form, can't they? Yeah. All right. Well, mm -hmm. anything else to add? Um, you said that games can be treated as art form. Hmm. How would you treat League of Legends as an art? Well, not not obviously not all games can be you know art. Okay. Do you don't think League is an art form? I don't. I think no. when no. I think of art in like video game as art, I will think more like story driven games or sandbox games where you can actually like create the art oh, yeah. in the game. Fair enough. Well, do you think League of Legends is an art form? Mm. I think like I feel like the really good players treat it like mm. well an art form. I guess because sure. they just you know really train on their craftsmanship I yeah. guess yeah that's interesting uh, what's a game that you definitely will not view as an art form like do you think like Minesweeper is an good art question. what that's a good question yeah I guess it just like, it, it like just ends up just being what your definition of art is right you um, can think anything I think I think I wouldn't treat Payday 2 as an art form game mm. this is about robbing you know? That is mm. true, but robbing bank isn't art in itself. Yeah, for for bank robbers, but we're not bank robbers, are we? Yeah, I yeah. guess so. You're right. But, you know. Yeah, different strokes for different folks, I guess. Exactly. All right. Uh, let's move on to. Uh, Backing the stack, by the way. What? Where are you going? I'm gonna take a leak. Back pretty quick. You what? guys just keep going with the podcast. All right, we'll just fill time, right? That's what we do anyways. All right. All right, yeah. Rahul, what games have you been playing this last week? Um, I've been playing uh, WWE 2K17. Mm -hmm. I've just been playing people. I made a loop. Yep. Uh, I, think, I think it was you. I made really? a loop with your help. You know? I think uh, you yeah, made Yeah, yeah, I made a uh, I help. Like, yeah. 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 Then I tweaked him a bit more, and then... Mm -hmm. I've just been winning titles with him. Does he like still have all the kick moves? Like, always moves yep. just kick them. Yeah. That's good. Yep. You, gotta, you gotta keep him like, the true nature. You can't yep. change him too much. Yeah, exactly. I've also been playing some Witcher 3. Witcher which 3? Which is... I can watch. Yeah, I can... No, I don't have any of the expansions. Okay. But I consider Witcher 3 as an art form game. Yeah, definitely. It's very uh, highly praised. Yep. Yep. What about you? I've been just, you know, playing League of Legends. But yep. having some issues logging into the game, which uh, is quite disheartening. This is why I do not consider League of Legends as an art form, because yep. you need an internet connection to play it. Yep, exactly. I agree. And uh, what else have I been playing? I've been playing Endless Lake on Facebook.com, and yep. I beat yep. your high score recently. So, yeah. Did you? Yeah. With your high 
What? What's your high score? Like 211. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I better beat you again. Yeah. This is this is a great segment, isn't it? Keep the competitive spirit alive. Yeah. Okay. Welcome hey, back. Well, thanks. All right. Just in time for our uh, music segment, we're going to talk, talk about some new music releases. Uh, Katy Perry released a new single, Chain to the Rhyme, or is it Rhythm? Rhythm, I think. Okay. Yeah. And Lupe Fiasco also released a new album called, I mean, not album, new single called Dragus Black. It's what? an album. It's an album. Yeah, I've been yeah, confirmed it's an album. Yeah. All right. Do we have anything to say about the album or the single? Well, I really like Lupe Fiasco. His last album was pretty pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't listened to it yet, but I feel like it might be pretty cool. Well, considering it's called, it's called Drug of Light, it might be good with lighter songs, like more dance music songs instead of the more deeper songs that was that were featured in the last album. Yeah. Yep. When was his last album released? 2015. 2015, so it's a pretty, like, not that long of a break for, yeah. Mm. All right, so, has anyone else listened to this album? No. Okay, let's listen to the, uh, another album by Sampha, Process. Do we, we all listen yeah, to this one, right? Yeah. Yep, I listen to it. Yeah, what do you think about it? Can you just, like, s- can you spend 15 minutes just talking about it? Because we need to fill up Fif- time. Yeah. 15 minutes? I don't think I can do 15 minutes. Well... Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I can't just talk. talk just music. how do you feel about this album, and would you recommend? Basically, it's pretty good. It's it's a good, uh, fresh album. I would recommend it. All these songs are pretty good. So it's who, like, can, can you tell us a little bit about who the Sampha character is? Uh, Sampha is some guy who like did a lot of background singing, for, like Beyonce and like all those guys. Mm-hmm. But now he's released his own album. He like reached a big league. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, basically. Mm-hmm. Is uh, Eminem in this album? Eminem is not in this album. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is uh, Mad City in this album included? Mad City? Yeah. No. no. Mad City. No Mad City. Okay. It's unfortunate. Okay. okay. Yeah. Anything you want to add? Uh, not really. Yeah. We haven't really researched this part of the show, unfortunately. Hey, you guys should get the Eat Now app on your mobile. It's really cool. The what? The Eat Now app on your mobile. It's really cool. What does it do? Does it help you eat your food faster? You know, it helps, like, you get delivered food from places. Like where? Like anywhere. We're not, we're not sponsored by the app, by the way. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Also, Uber Eats is pretty good. If you want to I've heard good. only good things about it. <laughs> okay, yeah. so let's check out a playlist by Rahul Dalal. It's called A Classic Really. Who's that? Um, I don't know. It's just like a lot of songs, isn't it? It's just the playlist you found, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and like I shared it with you guys, and you guys all thought it was pretty good. So you guys want to? Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty yeah. cool playlist. Well, I think we should. You should go check it out, shouldn't we? Yeah, I will check it out and give it a follow, like you all should. <laughs> yep, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so what what genre like is the playlist? It's a bit of. I think it's a bit of everything from what I see. Really. A bit of this, a bit of that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A bit of, a bit of a... Okay. It's, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Looks good. Uh, a classic, really. Check it out on Spotify out now. Out now on Spotify. Yeah. All right. Let's move to our, what everyone's favorite segment is, or at least Kevin Yang's favorite segment. Uh, some real life drama shit. All right. So first of all, uh, we're gonna be talking about um, Yuzei Jai. His uh, 18th birthday is coming up soon. And in this event, uh, he invited a bunch of people. And uh, Alan Abraham actually posted saying, white person count how? But actually, uh, our friend here, F. Kelsey, was also invited. And F. Kelsey just replied with an O, with a sad face. What do you guys think about this? Um, I think O with the sad face really means that this person is sad and um, really... I don't know the I don't know the word because English is not my first language. I don't know the word. And he's feeling depressed because yeah, yeah exactly yeah depressed because um, Alan didn't consider him as a white person. Yeah, well, or, uh, white... do you do you even do you consider yourself as a white person? 
Yeah. Well, we got you on the show, right? So why don't you just tell us a little bit about how you feel? Just like really yeah. unload on us, your feelings. Well, what really got me like annoyed was people that liked the Alan Abraham post without liking my comment. It's kind of like yeah. not showing recognition of my existence. Yeah. You feel? Yeah, I feel you. Okay, do you think... And like... Okay, go ahead. No, I didn't have anything to say. <laughs> do you think... Like, Alan Abraham did this out of, like, spite? Or was it just he forgot about your existence as you have so well, before, put it? Before I answer that, before I answer that question, yeah. I need you to define the word spite for me. It's, like, out of hatred, I guess. Or like, this. Mm-hmm. I think it's you. not so much hatred, just kind of, like, dislike. But I, I don't think he, like, realized. Mm-hmm. Either he didn't realize or he doesn't like me. Well, like, if he, if he did realize in the just like consciously eat like didn't count you how would you, do you yeah. say this is like a hate um is it hate attack how, how do you say it? i guess yeah so where it is but... isn't it like no no yeah go hate. Hate yeah crime, hate i guess crime. like if it is hatred i don't really care you just don't care about the hate as well i don't care okay Rahul, what do you think about yeah. this you're, you're friends with both of the uh people in this yeah. situation how do you feel? I think I think it's what Fabian said. I think it's just he didn't realize he was in the event, so he just kept out as a white person. But I don't see how it would be a hate crime because we went to an international school together. Yeah, that's very true. From, which promoted harmony and international mindedness. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think he would have learned from the values rep- represented by the school. Um, do you think, like, to what extent is Yuse at fault here for not actually inviting a big uh, percentage of white people to his event? Because um, he's I not really he's... representing his, like, the internationalness, you know. I think he's just more friends with other people and not more. Yeah. Do you think that is something we're born into? Like, we're more likely to make friends of people of our own ethnicity? No, because I only have a few Indian friends. Okay. Not a lot. Okay, what, about, yeah. what do you think, Fabian? Uh, I'm like Sam Rahul. I don't have that many Italian friends, so yeah, same I do. Okay. So, you guys, it's all water under the bridge for you guys? Or yep. you guys are going to have fun yep. at the party, obviously, yeah? Yeah, Make I'm going to get out. drunk out of my mouth. Oh, I might not go. No. Oh, why not? I don't know. I just... And we're all of legal age, so we're not promoting underage drinking for the purposes yep. of this podcast. Yep. All right. Anyways, uh, as you know, last week, one of our uh, most popular segments was, in fact, Yuse Jack Jeff and Jeffy Cheese uh, cucking vegetarian beef, as we put it. And this week, there's actually an update on the situation. It seems like they have made up because um, on this post by Relationship Goals, it says, even if we fight a lot, I still want you in my life. And there's a picture of, like, two people kissing, right? And then, Yuzo Jai tagged Jeff Chi and commented us. So, do you think this is an improvement in their relationship? Or are they just for acting sure. like this for the paparazzis? What was the photo? The photo is just two people kissing. Okay. Cool. Um, so, I think maybe they've made up. I think uh, tagging Jeffy in the photo of two people showing love mm-hmm. it's signs of making up and the, that they've become friends with okay. if you if you haven't if you haven't made up yet you would tag him in like some violent thing you know like yeah like it would definitely wouldn't be I still want you in my life that's a very powerful statement exactly. okay what do you think Fabian about this uh, developing situation I don't think Yuse and Jeffy are the kind of blokes to like, you know, fake it for the paparazzi. Yeah. They're just like not that type, not those type of blokes. So I think it's more so that these blokes are making it up, right? Mm-hmm. These blokes yep. are being friends now. Well, like this yep. is only the story from Yuse Jai's perspective, right? Yeah. We haven't really gotten any official statements from Jeff Chi, so. That's true. What do you think? Do you think Jeff Chi is still holds a grudge against Yuse? Uh, I think we should ask Jeffy that question. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I we think... should feature Jeffy in this podcast. 
Yes, maybe sometime soon. But like right now, Jeff Chi is quite the lone wolf. So we don't really know how to get in contact with him. So if you could get yep. con- in contact with Jeff Chi, uh, please let us know. So we can uh, really interview him and get this. Oh. Yeah. I have him on Facebook, so I can message him. Okay. Is he online oh, right now? Cool. This is a live development, oh. guys. Go yeah. have a look. Ooh. See? Take a look. We only talk to you guys about the most up-to-date news stories. He is yeah. offline, unfortunately. Oh, unfortunately. Well. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's about it for this section, unless you guys have anything more to say? No, no. not really. All right. And, uh, well, um, every week we do a segment where we update you guys on the uh, progress of the Riemann hypothesis. And we've heard your feedback. Many of you thought that the segment was too short last week. So this week we're going to do a all out like masterclass on what the situation is with the Riemann hypothesis. So why don't you take it away, Fabian? All right. So one thing that's really got these people like bazoodling is the statement that one plus two plus three plus four all the way up to infinity is negative one over 12. That's not right. Cause one plus two is already more than zero, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Something's going wrong here. It's just not adding up both figuratively mm-hmm. and uh, literally. Well, there's this thing called analytic continuation where you have a function Mm -hmm. and you can kind of like draw the graph in regions where it doesn't normally get drawn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of like assign a value to the sum even if it doesn't seem right, you know? Yeah, that's about it, really. Could you just repeat that in uh, layman's terms if possible? Basically you have a pretty picture, but for some parts, you can't draw the pretty picture because it doesn't make mathematical sense. But the mathematicians are like, screw that, we're just going to draw it anyway, even if Mm -hmm. it leads to a redundant statement. Okay, fair enough. Yep. Okay. Well, well, do you think, why hasn't, like, all the best mathematicians in the world has not been able to solve the Riemann hypothesis? What do you think that is? (laughs) That's a very, very, very difficult question. Um, I think it's partly because the Riemann hypothesis is related to the prime numbers, and they're really, really hard to crack. Prime numbers have been troubling mathematicians for a very, very long time. Yeah. There's a lot of un- unsolved problems in mathematics all relating to prime numbers. So I yeah. think it's just because so, of that relation. Yeah. So I think, can you just explain what prime numbers are for like a younger audience? Yeah. Yes, please. All right. So it's a number that uh, only has factors yeah. itself and one. But one what, isn't what counted are, as a factor. What are factors? What are, yeah, what are factors? I'm not too sure. Factors are numbers that uh, the number itself can, can you explain, be divided. Can you explain factors using like apples, like number of apples? Okay. Yeah. So let's say you have six apples. Yeah. You can group the apples into certain into groups, each with a specific amount of apples. So you could have groups of three. You could have two groups of three. So right? it's like if you have three apple trees and each grow two apples. Yeah, exactly. But, for example, if you have seven apples mm. and you want to sort them into bunches, the yeah. only way you can is to have a bunch of seven seven lots of one apple. So what just about, seven apples. What seven. about two lots of 3.5 apples? Yeah, but is we're that, concerned is, here with is that just the whole new mathematical system that we don't really want to be delving into here on our little podcast? Exactly. Because we're talking about number theory here, which deals with the whole numbers, the integers. Yeah. So we don't really care. Do, do non-whole numbers exist in the physical plane that we exist in? Um, I'd say they can. If you eat half an apple, you got half an apple. Well, it's, it won't be exactly half, would it? That's true. That's true. Very true. Yeah. Okay, just uh, continue about the prime numbers. Um. Yeah, so what about them? What are prime numbers? We yep, so prime are numbers are numbers that... Pardon? We know what factors are now, so can you explain? Okay. Yeah, okay, so you know what factors are. Well, prime numbers only have factors themselves Mm -hmm. and one. So you can't divide them into any other number than one of themselves. So they're kind of like the building block of other numbers. And a reason why this is important is if you look at the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, Mm -hmm. which basically states that any number can be written as a unique multiplication of prime numbers. So, for example, if you take the number 6, that can be expressed as 2 times 3, where 2 and 3 are both prime. If you take the number 18, you can express that as 
3 times 3, mm -hmm. which is 9, times 2. And that's a unique prime factorization. And every number has this uniqueness, prime factorization. So prime numbers are essentially the building blocks for other numbers. So they're really important. They also it's come like, up a lot in... Prime numbers are like little Lego pieces. And other numbers yeah. are like... Wait, I don't understand that statement. Because can't non-prime numbers also be factors? They can, Did but you, just... you can break up Why the you... non-prime numbers into prime factors. Do you they see? Can't. So, for example, if you have the statement a equals four times two, yeah. the four is still made up of smaller bits, yeah. namely two times two. Two is so not a prime equal... number. Yes, it is. It's only. It's not a prime number. Yes, it is. How is it a prime number? Okay, its <laughs> factors are one and two. That's. What about? 0 0.5 and 4. 0 0.5. <laughs> We're only concerned with whole numbers as we stated previously. Oh, what about negative 1? We only really care about positive whole numbers, too, sorry. Okay. But if we only care about positive whole numbers, why does the Riemann yep. hypothesis equals negative a half? <laughs> because <laughs> the Riemann hypothesis is not only related to primes, it has other stuff in it too. And for example, if you plug in, I don't know, I forgot there's a certain value if you plug in, you end up with pi squared over six as a certain number for when you plug into the Riemann hypothesis. So it's not just primes, it's other stuff too. Rahul, you all right there? Hmm. What? What's going yeah, on? Sorry. Done. I fell asleep for a second, sorry. Sorry. All right. Uh, so just All right, like, I just got something to add. Yeah. Um, I think a person needs to step foot on Mars first before we solve the Heim Riemann hypothesis. The Riemann the hypothesis. hypothesis. Yeah, Riemann hypothesis. Also, yeah. um, the Riemann hypothesis is like half-life three. Like it's never yeah, gonna come. Three. Yeah. Uh, but what if it if it does, it's gonna be pretty big, isn't it? Yeah, it's really yeah. gonna shock the gaming world. If the exactly. there, was a quote, there was a quote from this guy. He said, if he woke up in 200 years, the first question he would ask is, has the Riemann hypothesis been solved? Yeah. It really makes you think, yeah. huh? <laughs> so is he predicting it wouldn't even be solved in 200 years? Maybe. Do you think it'll be solved in our lifetimes? We can only stay hopeful, right? Yeah, that's true. So Actually, I don't know yet. No idea. So we're just saying it no, it hasn't been proved yet, but check in next week where maybe it will be proved. Yep. Yeah. Any other it can happen math, at any time. Any other math-related topics you would like to discuss? Uh, 9 plus 10 is equal to 21 somehow. No, it's not. Maybe in well, the, I think... maybe if the Riemann hypothesis get proved, maybe that equation will be proved yeah. also. In the math, world, everything is like linked together, you know? Yeah, yeah that's true. All right, so uh, before we end the show, we're just going to do the Q&A segment where we answer some questions left in the last episode. Uh, first question is from Lies, and he asked, 100 subscriber shirtless cam review. What do you think about that suggestion? Um, I'm down. Yeah, yeah. if we get 100 subs, we'll do a shirtless Plows podcast episode. How about that? Yep. All right. We're all in agreement there. And uh, yep. the next question, it was not really a question, it was just a comment, but uh, Henry Lan commented, this is fake news. Fabian talking to Skype is impossible. Nice try, you fake. So what do you think? Are we fake? Uh, I don't think so, because I see Fabian right there on the screen. Yeah. That's yeah, fake. You, you real? Can you prove you're real? Hey, Fabian, uh, do a gang sign you if can you're real. Send a message on my face to my Facebook account. Yeah, send, uh, just screen. Follow him on Instagram, where he'll uh, prove that he's real. That's uh, Instagram.com um, slash FKRC1. Yep. Link in the description. Just below. like my new post. Yep. Because this is live, um, we can also do a live test if this is real. Yeah. So I'm just gonna say you do something. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you're real, throw a gang sign. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what did you say? <laughs> throw a gang. <laughs> do a gang Roll sign. A what? Do a gang throw sign. A... If what? If, if you're real. If you're real. Gang sign. It's not a gang sign, that's a peace sign. Is that a gang sign? I don't think so. I think 
Can you show him how to do a gang sign? Then you can do it. Um, this is the crib gang sign, but we don't relate to crib. crib. <laughs> He's wearing um, red. How can he be in the crib? Yeah, I'm just saying because crypt is easy. Uh, to well, 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 we're just saying Fabian is real, right? Why did he turn? Yep. Yeah, he just turned his camera off. Okay. Therefore, he That's must be pretty random, isn't it? Yep. And uh, one final question from Alvin Young. Uh, <laughs> what are you guys doing with your lives? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone want to answer that question? Uh, yeah, yeah, you just, can, and then we'll follow. Like, we're just trying to really educate, like our friends. <clears throat> you know yeah. what's going on in the world and our. Doing it for you. I'll be a very limited opinion on these topics. Hopefully, yeah. you guys find enjoyment and also learn a thing or two, such as prime numbers or factors from our podcast. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> also, because we just want to express ourselves, you know. Yeah. What's wrong with that? All right. So, if you have any more questions for us, uh, leave it in the comments below or email us at the Plows Podcast at gmail dot com. And uh, that's the end of the second episode. Uh, we would just like to thank our first Patreon supporter, Yul Lee. And, uh, thank you. Yeah, it's really, you know, really motivating for us to see that. Um, Evan Mimingus wanted a shout out, but I won't give him a shout out because he hasn't yeah. pledged one. Definitely no the... shout out for Evan Mimingus because he has not paid Patreon. on Patreon. For a one dollar pledge, we will yeah. we will give. You and uh, if we get one more dollar. Uh, we'll make all subsequent episodes one hour long, which is going to be a great no, disaster. We, we won't. Actually. It's on Patreon. We have to do it. Oh, that's bad. We we got to set out. You know, we can't be lying to our fans. So uh, okay, if you want to support well. us, uh, patreon.com slash plows podcast. Help us out. Yeah, that's the end of the second episode. Also, also uh, follow the Spotify playlist. It will be linked in the description. Yeah, it's just a really great... Uh, we just I found it on Spotify. Music, yeah. and, we just found it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. Um, Thank you. I feel like this podcast has really like, become commercialized. Oh, uh, it's all right. If you yeah. want to support us, uh, audible.com or Loot Crate, you know, hit us up, plowspodcast at gmail.com. For a yep. 5% yeah. discount. Yeah, five percent discount. Or if you want a mattress, go to lynda.com slash plowers. Yep. It's a really great mattress. Um, yeah, that's about it. See you guys later. It's Bye. Up.